Now, why is it that the Robinson curriculum is so opposed to this more formal academic instruction when it comes to language arts? Well, here's why. House. All right, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of RC language arts. Hi there, my name is Karen, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to go from questions to confidence when it comes to the Robinson curriculum, I'm here to answer questions. And just like I started off with the do's and don'ts of RC math, all this information is in the RC course of study. So I highly encourage you to read it for yourself. But again, I also know as a busy mom of six myself, especially during pregnancies, newborns, you're sleep deprived, it can be hard to sit down and read something like that. So I wanna break it down for you here. I got your back. I'm gonna tell you right now what you have to know, the do's and what you really need to stay away from, the don'ts to have the maximum amount of success with the Robinson curriculum. Now, when I talk about language arts, that's covering grammar, spelling, writing, and I'm gonna talk about even a little bit, you know, the phonics early on. So, and vocabulary, of course. Did I mention that? That's a big part of RC. So let's start from the very beginning. Now, the first do, which is extremely important, is do practice good grammar at home. And you know this as a parent, that they just naturally pick up your vocabulary, your mannerisms, and other people around them. Now, they will also emulate what they read through their writing and speech, and this is why the RC book list is so important. So the first big don't is don't create a poor environment when it comes to language. And yes, the worst offender is the television. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. There are other things too, such as bad books and bad company, but let's face it, a big one today is television, movies, screens. Now, I know this following don't can be a little perplexing to parents, but don't have formal instruction when it comes to grammar and spelling, punctuation, things like that. They will naturally pick it up through the books that they read, through the daily writing assignment, and from the vocabulary that you use. Now, yes, it's true, it will take a little bit more time for them to really excel in these areas, you know, when it comes to spelling. But in the end, it will be a higher result, a higher outcome, and it leaves time right now in these foundational years for the more important subjects. Now, why is it that the Robinson curriculum is so opposed to this more formal academic instruction when it comes to language arts? Well, here's why. Because oftentimes these dry, let's face it, boring artificial methods can have negative consequences when it comes to the development of reading and writing skills. We want it to be a positive experience for our children. We want them to love reading, love books. We want them to enjoy writing and be able to really express themselves through writing. And those things just don't always come about with the more formal approach. I mean, you see it all the time in public schools where kids are saying they hate writing, they don't know how to write, just a page of their own thoughts, they hate books. So that is what we try to avoid. Now the tools are there with the Robinson curriculum and I'll talk about them in just a little bit, but they're not meant to be used year in and year out. It's just something that you use for a specific time, a few weeks, a few months, to improve something rather quickly. But again, that's it. It's not meant to be a subject that you teach year after year, detracting from time that would be better spent on other subjects. So let's talk about the very few but critically important do's when it comes to language arts with RC. Do start with a strong phonics program. Now RC Online comes with Alpha Phonics, which is fantastic. I really enjoy the using that program and the results that I have seen from it. So there you go. Now this is a major component here. Do have the master the 6,400 vocabulary cards that come with RC. And yes, these words should become an active part of their vocabulary by the age of 17. 
There are also 1,600 vocabulary exercise sheets that come with the vocabulary cards, and that, that's in the form of crossword puzzles, word searches, and matching worksheets just like this. Now, if you're asking yourself why, these vocabulary cards are not just important for the SAT or not just important for verbal and written development, but each one of these words contain a thought, a concept that should be available for each student in their daily life. Now, I don't have to tell you all the benefits of having a large vocabulary. I mean, outside of the academic scope, you know, just in real life out there, it's well known that People who have large vocabularies get the raises and they get promoted, you know, all of that. Now, do have them master these words both ways. One way meaning that they look at the word and they can quote the definition on the back, but also that they can look at the definition on the back and say the word. And a little note here is that two-thirds of the definitions on the back of the vocabulary cards come straight from the book. So this is really going to help them with their reading comprehension and they must master these words before moving on to the next book and the next set of vocabulary cards. And do check their retention by adding the previous books cards, maybe two or even three books, adding them together to make sure that they really are mastering these words and not just learning them for a short period of time to then, you know, being able to pass it quickly and then they forget about it. So again, do check retention by mixing in the previous two to three books for review. When it comes to memorization, do use the same approach that they use with the math flashcards, meaning they look at the word, they look at the definition, if they get it right, they put it in the wrong pile, and if they get it wrong, they put it in the wrong pile. At the end of that little drill, they'll have two piles, right and wrong. They could put away the right pile for the next day and then work on their wrong pile and do it again. Look at it, right, wrong, and obviously with this much repetition in one session, they'll get to the point where they can say the definition for each word, and then they put it away and do it again the next day. Do use the interactive flashcard program that comes with RC for you know mastering the flashcards, but don't use it until they get to Saxon Calculus or age 16. Again, keeping in mind with the whole no screens until the age of 16. But there is an interactive kind of flashcard drill program that they can use. Do take the SATs once all the vocabulary cards, 6,400, are mastered. The SAT is largely a vocabulary test. Keep that in mind. All right, moving on, let's talk about the daily writing assignment. Do assign one page of daily writing every day. And this could be just as simple as using a notebook like this and they just write a page. I recommend double space front and back to leave you some space for um, feedback. And I also created this book, the essay writing book, because it has commonly misspelled words, but I also put a section here where they can write their frequently misspelled words. There's also a little basic guide here on essay writing, space to brainstorm, and then the rest is like a regular notebook. Now do assign, if you want, copy work up until the age of 10. Up until the age of 10, that's perfectly fine, but if they want to write their own compositions, great, you know, that's even better. But it's okay if they're doing copy work still up until the age of 10. They can use the Book of Knowledge, the Bible. We love to use the McGuffey readers. And when they're first starting out, maybe five, six, seven, I really do like the Draw Right Now books because they're drawing and also they're writing uh, little sentences, little paragraphs. So I think that's a great transition. Do make them rewrite it if it's too sloppy or too many careless errors. But for the most part, they can just fix their mistakes and they don't have to rewrite it. Do explain the grammar or punctuation that they need to fix, but don't correct all the misspellings. That they should really look in the dictionary to fix. You can circle it, but don't give them the correct spelling. They should look it up in the dictionary. And I will admit to you right now, I fail at this. I just give them the correct spelling 
and then I tell them to write it 10 times each and add it to their list of frequently misspelled words. But ideally, following the program, you should not do that. You should just circle it and let them find it in the dictionary. And don't let them start a new assignment without fixing all the mistakes from the previous assignment. Now talking about spelling, do use Professor K spelling if they need some additional help with that. It's a big book of just spelling words, spelling families that they can work on a list a day or a list a week, whatever speed you wanna go at. Remember, it's not something to be done year in, year out, just for a short period of time so that you're not taking away time from other important subjects. Do use the vocabulary cards as spelling cards as well if you want to. Now, if you need it, do use the Professor K grammar program that comes with RC. A great benefit to that is that the exercises actually come from the RC books. You can print it off from the CDs or RC online, or it's also available to purchase at robinsonbooks.com. Same thing goes for the spelling book. And last but not least, do expose them to books written by authors who have a mastery of the English language and they will master it too. That's it for this video. If you're curious about the Robinson curriculum, I will leave a link down below to a free 13 part video course that I have created for it. And I will also link in a card above my playlist for all Robinson curriculum videos. And I have a few, so if you're interested in my RC support products, I will leave a link to my store down below. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you jump on that playlist and I will see you in another video. Bye.